So taking a look at the average snowfall patterns for a week La Nina years, we clearly see a strong indication that we see more snowfall than usual right over the northern Midwest as well as Pacific Northwest, which makes me, believe, me more inclined to believe that where it is certainly more likely you're going to experience a snowier and colder than average winter in those areas. However, in other areas such as uh, southern Rocky Mountain ranges, this is where you receive less snowfall than usual typically during week La Nina years which gives an indication that we would see uh, uh, less likely of a chance to see a colder and snowier than average winter right over that area. So the most likely scenario this winter is that we're going to be in a weak La Nina. So it's suddenly important to take a look at the anomalies when it comes to average snowfall for each area during, um, during weak La Nina. But well. we need to take a look at other factors as well because this is far from the only factor that could determine the likelihood you experience a quarter and snowier than average winter. If we were to shift our focus a little bit further eastward, we see that the snowfall anomalies hover more so around average, especially right over the mid-Atlantic and northeast, but we do have some pockets where you do typically receive more snowfall than usual, such as in portions of western Massachusetts as well as northern Connecticut. Pretty much right over the Appalachian Mountain Ranges of New England, you typically receive more snowfall than usual during week La Nina years and then for the Adirondack Mountains as well or I, I should be more specific right around the Great Lakes region you receive much more snowfall than usual over um, during week La Nina years and you're probably wondering the difference from average when it comes to how much more snowfall you typically receive in these areas just look at the scale on the bottom for most of the northern Midwest the difference um, between the average seasonal snowfall um, between the average and week La Nina years is between 4 to 12 inches above average which could be significant especially in certain areas where you don't typically receive um, that much snowfall relative to other areas so in places like Minneapolis Des Moines as well as Fargo you definitely could experience um, you definitely could feel the effects of a weak La Nina when it comes to the frequency of snowstorms this winter which is definitely more frequent during weak La Nina years so again um, this gives a good indication of the likelihood you're going to experience a stronger or weaker winter when it comes to snowfall and colder temperatures but like I I said let's take a look at other factors before we can automatically jump to that conclusion so here are the temperature anomalies for the years compared to week la nina um, I, I mean the um compared to the long-term average um when we're taking a look out i'm um, pretty much what i did was take all the week la nina years and compared it to a long-term average and as you can see it's simply much colder than normal right over the northern um, midwest where the temperature anomalies could hover between three to four degrees fahrenheit which could be significant in a lot of these areas as you definitely would experience a lot more cold spells during the winter time frame as you're definitely going to likely feel it in the northern midwest and for the areas further southward while it is cooler than normal the temperature anomaly is a lot less strong only um typically speaking one degree below average so it's such a weak anomaly to the point where i don't think that you will necessarily feel much of a difference of course there are stronger um, week la nina years where the cold spells do tend to be stronger but there could also almost be an equal amount of week la nina years where the temperature hovers closer to average for the winter or maybe slightly above average since the anomaly just isn't very strong in the southern southwest for me to confidently say that the chance of a quarter and snowier an average winter will be much more significant in these areas especially since we did see the previous snowfall anomaly map for week la nina years and it typically brings less snowfall than usual over the southern rocky mountain ranges despite the fact that it's simply around one degree cooler than normal during week la nina year so this should certainly raise the likelihood you're going to experience a rough winter when it comes to snowfall in the north midwest and then if we were to again shift our focus to the east coast the temperatures fall more in line closer to average and um, and we do have a small anomaly right over the southeast where it is slightly above normal, but it's such a weak anomaly to a point where, like I said, 
I'm not inclined to believe that it's going to be far less likely thanks to just thanks to this week anomaly we see right here. But base, um, but um, so when it comes to this, we need to take a look at other factors that might tip the scale, um, per se, when it comes to um, whether or not you're going to experience a higher likelihood of colder than average conditions or snowier than average conditions. Because when the temperatures fall around average during week La Nina years, then there's definitely, um, we definitely need to take a look at other factors that could shift the tide when it comes to the winter for you guys. So we're going to take a look at that for the northeast as well as southeast however typically speaking during la nina years and weak la nina years since it is a little bit drier than normal over the southeast as well as the fact that typically just in generally speaking during la nina years um, we see a weaker subtropical jet which means that it's simply drier in the southeast i do expect it to be a little bit less likely than normal for you guys to experience a uh, uh, colder and snowier than average winter while for northeast it could all depend on various other factors we're going to take a look at in this video so now here are the precipitation anomalies for weak la nina years compared to the long-term average as we see it's simply drier right up along a lot areas of the southeast and this moves as far north as the mid-atlantic but again the anomalies aren't very strong the only Areas where the anomaly is very strong when it comes to precipitation is in Florida, where it's simply much drier than normal during weak La Nina years. And the coast of California and pretty much the entire Pacific coast experiences much stronger anomalies in favor of a precipitation deficit, um, which means that you're less likely to experience um, rainfall and snowfall in a lot of these areas. But for the rest of the United States, there isn't really much of a strong precipitation anomaly. So again, I think it's going to come down to other factors that may determine whether or not you're going to experience more precipitation or snowfall than usual. Um, as it seems like the precipitation anomaly um, division plot isn't very show, um, isn't really showing strong anomalies that we could lean upon to really forecast what the likelihood you're going to experience a colder and snowier than average winter. One factor I'd like to take a look at is the Pacific North American pattern, which plays a big role in determining which areas of the United States will experience colder or warmer than average temperatures. And as you can see, by the time we approach the winter time frame, right around November and December, we are expected to be in a positive PNA pattern, which means that the eastern half of the United States would likely experience colder and snowier than normal conditions, while the western half would be more likely to experience slightly warmer and drier than normal conditions. So definitely, um, it's definitely a pattern we're going to need to take a look at over the next um, coming months. Of course, as far from certain, this is a very long-term forecast extending into December, and we're only in September, so there could be variations when it comes to the forecast, but based on what this is indicating it is a little bit more likely um that um the, the pattern will favor um to bring a little bit more colder and snowier than normal conditions right over the northeast here's a quick example of how the p and a pattern works so in the positive phase we of course see colder than normal conditions right over the eastern half of the united states um thanks to lower air pressures while along the western half we see higher air pressures which means that it's simply drier and cooler than normal during a positive phase which is the most likely phase at this point in time for the early part of the winter and then the negative phase we see that the opposite occurs for the united states Another big thing I want to take a look at is the drought monitor for the U.S. As we see that areas that are under a severe drought include um, the southern portions of the Midwest, including Texas, portions of Oklahoma, extending into Kansas and New Mexico as well. And we also see the drier than normal conditions pretty much um, swallow up the entire portion of the Pacific Northwest, where Montana, Wyoming, Idaho... Um, Washington and Oregon are involved with much drier and normal conditions and we do have some small portions of drought conditions in what the West Virginia Ohio area as well as portions of the Mississippi River Valley closer to Tennessee as well as Alabama so this it could definitely play a role in terms of the amount of precipitation you receive because of course droughts don't go away overnight as it takes a very prolonged period of time for a drought to go away thanks to the fact that 
there um it's just a constant feedback loop that encourages a drought to continue once a drought begins so it's going to be very it could be relatively difficult for the precipitation especially in the southern portion of the united states to take away this drought when during la nina years a subtropical jet is simply very weak over this area so this makes me more inclined to believe that the southern united states would have a more difficult time um receiving snowfall and colder than normal conditions this winter thanks to the drought conditions that are going on and for the pacific northwest um while it is drier than normal right now i eventually do expect the la nina pattern to take over um eventually since we um since during uh, the summer in general it's very difficult for precipitation to move in this region of the country so um, while you guys are in a drought right now, it isn't necessarily so, um, it isn't very, it isn't necessarily so rare is what I'm trying to say, um, coming off the summer time frame. But once we approach the winter time frame, when the jet stream definitely starts to move further southward and the ridge allows the jet to move a little bit further southward, that's when I do expect the La, the La Nina pattern to sort of take away this drought by the time we approach the winter time frame. Uh, so while the beginning of winter might feel a little bit drier and warmer than usual, um, thanks to all the factors I just um, stated before when it comes to the typical pattern you see during a week La Nina, when it comes to snowfall and temperature, I do eventually expect it still to be an above average winter when it comes to snowfall and colder temperatures. And then for the rest of the United States, really the only areas that aren't in a drought include the Great Lakes region, the Northeast, as well as the Atlantic Southeast coast. And what this could mean is that in the areas that aren't really stricken in a drought, since the rest of the country is in a pretty severe drought at this time, that could push a lot of the lower um, air pressures to the areas that aren't really as um, drought stricken. So we could see more precipitation than usual right over the Great Lakes as well as the Northeast and the Southeast United States, thanks to the fact that um, the ridge will likely push a lot of the lower pressures aloft into these areas that aren't as drought stricken where the sinking air isn't as strong so i do think that will contribute to a more active uh slightly more um likely chance of a more active than usual winter in these areas so here's my probability forecast when it comes to the chance they're going to experience a colder and snowier than average winter so of course for the northern midwest i do expect it to be extremely likely at this time it seems like all the factors are pointing towards that direction this winter so expect much more snowstorms as well as cold spells this winter over this area and then in the darker blue still expect a very likely chance it's going to be a quarter and snowier than average winter this could include the areas right up along the great lakes where you could see a lot of lake effect snow and even outside of that this includes cities like um milwaukee uh, Minneapolis and this extends into Pacific Northwest as well um, and then for portions of the northern northeast as well more so right around northern New England where we during week La Nina's it is common to see more snowfall than usual over that area and then just out that I expect a likely chance it, the chance won't be as high but there still is a slightly more likely chance in the lighter blue shaded areas right over um, this includes cities like Boston, Buffalo, New York, as well, Cleveland, Ohio, as well as Des Moines. It should be a little bit more likely than usual. It will be a colder and snowier than average winter. And then for the southern United States, of course, pretty much the entirety of the southern um, portion is less likely to experience a quarter winter and uh, um, and I'm gonna put a more emphasis right over the Florida area as well as the four corner states um, where um, it's suddenly a lot less likely you experience temperatures as cold as well as snowfall that's above average so i do expect it to be a little bit more warmer and drier in the southern united states thanks to that but this is my winter um um 2024 2025 probability forecast if you want an even more in detail forecast regarding the chance you're going to experience a colder and snowier than average winter just make sure to comment down below your specific location and i'll do my best to try to answer the probability of of um you should see a colder and snowier than average winter 
this winter so make sure to comment down below if you're interested but that's it for now guys and i thank you guys for watching and make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather related content